Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Frankenhooker. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a man named Jeffrey Franken in the kitchen of his fiancée's residence, experimenting with a conscious brain with an eye. He tries to make it function properly. Suddenly, his soon-to-be mother-in-law comes in to get some condiments, as she's busy preparing for her husband's birthday party in the backyard. After that, the mother tells her daughter Elizabeth to go to the kitchen and reminds Elizabeth to slacken off from eating pretzels. Then Elizabeth's friend gets curious and asks what her mom said. She tells her that her mom cares about her body weight and thinks her fiancé is strange. She explains she has tried various kinds of diets to lose weight, but they are ineffective, and she even let Jeffrey staple her stomach, which shocked her friend. So the friend asks in disbelief what Jeffrey's profession is, or if he's even studying in medical school, curious as to why she let him do the operation on her. She then tells her it is okay, since they will be married soon. Meanwhile, Jeffrey's experimentation malfunctions. Elizabeth comes in and invites him to go outside to celebrate with them. After Elizabeth's father blows his cake's candle, Elizabeth presents him with her gift, an automatic lawn mower invented by Jeffrey. The mom also feels proud of Jeffrey's inventions. Then Elizabeth cheerily demonstrates how the lawnmower works. As she starts the lawnmower, Jeffrey warns her not to stand in front of it. However, Elizabeth ignores it and proceeds with her demonstration. Suddenly, the lawnmower speeds up and goes straight in Elizabeth's direction, killing her with its blade abruptly. From that day forward, Jeffrey begins to study and plans how to bring Elizabeth back to life using his scientific knowledge. He emotionally watches the tape of the news segment about Elizabeth's death, where the journalist reports how her body turns into mints with her missing body parts. Later, Jeffrey's mom enters the room to check up on him, worried as he laments for his late fiancée. She tries to encourage him to meet with another woman, move on with life, and continue his medical school studies. Suddenly, his mom notices his brain with an eye project and gets amazed by it. She asks what it is called, but Jeffrey does not know yet. He opens up that his mental health is declining, as he is unable to think reasonably and seems to get himself detached from reality. He tells her he's afraid of his condition. Jeffrey's mom looks concerned, but does not know how to respond. Before she leaves, she tells him not to be an all-nighter, without knowing that Jeffrey is planning to do something. After that, Jeffrey goes into the garage, gets a sack under his car hood, and enters his laboratory. It turns out, he has been hiding Elizabeth's head and other body parts that were missing. He then puts them on the table, as he imagines having a romantic dinner date with her. He even talks to Elizabeth's head about his plan to bring her to life, and lets it drink some wine. Then he optimistically presents an album, with several photos of Elizabeth's head attached to different women's bodies. He puts Elizabeth's body parts back in the cooler, as he recites a poem he wrote for her. Afterward, Jeffrey feels guilty that his plan to assemble a body for Elizabeth will require him to find some lev body parts, which means someone has to die for her to be alive again. He turns on the television and discovers a storm is coming in two days, so he motivates himself that he needs to do it, and then gets agitated. He gets the drill and performs trepanation by making a hole in his head to calm himself. After that, he manages to gather his thoughts and figure out where he can find the female body parts he needs. Afterward, he goes to the den of iniquity in the district to find some sex workers for the body parts he will need. Jeffrey gets thrilled to see several streetwalkers on every street. As he enters the street, a streetwalker named Honey immediately approaches him. He tells her he is looking for a few girls with the right parts. So the woman proudly shows him her melons, which attracts him. Upon seeing Jeffrey's cash, she tries to get in the car, but he does not let her in. He tells her he needs a few women. So she calls another woman. Then Jeffrey lies and explains that he's planning to throw a party like a beauty contest for his brother. The woman suggests Zorro, a procurer. So Honey guides him into the club, and they look for Zorro. In the bar, they pass by the crowd of hookers and johns. Honey approaches Zorro by kissing him. While whispering something to him, Jeffrey notices Honey's arm has a scald of Zorro's pendant. After Honey gets a medical substance from Zorro, Jeffrey talks with him about his need, and he also buys some substances from him. Later at home, Jeffrey develops an extra powerful substance from the thing he bought from the procurer, which he plans to use as a way to kill his victims quickly, while watching the show that talks about prostitutes who will get killed by using those illegal substances. Then he sees a hooker and imagines Elizabeth, which makes him freak out. So he drills his head again to calm down. He talks to himself and rationalizes that if he does not kill those women, the illegal substances will do it anyway. After that, Jeffrey tests the powerful drug on the guinea pig. He pumps the substance and lets the guinea pig inhale it, then it explodes. The following day, Jeffrey goes to meet Honey and the rest of the hookers. In the hotel, Honey introduces him to the women. He begins his search for the ideal body parts. He carefully scans their body and even measures their sizes to look for the best parts. 
After a few minutes, one of the hookers asks Jeffrey if he has chosen the perfect woman he needs, but Jeffrey feels frustrated as he cannot choose among them, so he starts having second thoughts about his plan's efficiency and feels guilty. The hookers are losing their patience and are worried about getting their pay, so he throws his bag in frustration. Honey checks the bag and suddenly gets thrilled as she sees the bag full of Jeffrey's deadly substance. The hookers start to celebrate and get insane with the overwhelming supply. Jeffrey tries to take it back, but the women pin him down. Jeffrey warns them that it is dangerous, but they ignore and even dance to the music, shaking their boobies as they start to get frenzy. Meanwhile, Zaro gets agitated as he waits for his hookers. He's losing his patience, so he angrily runs upstairs to check the room. In the room, one of the hookers starts to feel extremely hot and sweats all over her naked body just before she blows up. The room turns into chaos as the rest of the women panic and explode one after another. Just then, Zaro knocks at the door vigorously, yelling at them to open it up. Since no one is responding, he decides to break in forcibly. Simultaneously, Honey is about to explode, so she sneaks at Jeffrey's back, planning to stab him, but she suddenly blows up. At that moment, Zaro finally opens the door, where Honey's detached head flits on his face, making him unconscious. The room becomes havoc. Jeffrey continuously apologizes to the dead women and promises to repair them after Elizabeth. He then collects some of the women's good body parts and sneaks out by the hotel's fire exit. Afterward, Jeffrey arrives home and goes straight to his laboratory. He immediately starts to fix some body parts and reassembles Elizabeth's body by stitching the best pieces he brings home. For the final touch, he gets Elizabeth's head from the cooler and keeps the women's body parts in the cooler while uttering his promise to fix them later. He optimistically talks to Elizabeth's head and opens the sunroof. As the storm is about to begin, Jeffrey takes advantage of the lightning. He starts his machine to lift Elizabeth and gather electricity from the thunder, which will resurrect her body. Jeffrey watches the lightning hit Elizabeth's body, but simultaneously, it travels through the cooler and electrifies it, but he is unaware of that. Jeffrey waits for the stretcher to come down and excitedly checks the restored Elizabeth. However, the new Elizabeth looks and acts bizarrely. She only utters and repeats the hooker's lines before they die, and her body is uncoordinated. Jeffrey tries to converse with the new Elizabeth, who is now the Frankenhooker, but she slaps him and makes him unconscious. Elizabeth immediately escapes from the basement and begins to act like the previous hookers and search the street for any potential clients who are rich in both cash and hormones. Meanwhile, people on the subway train find her strange and look at her with disgust. A while later, Jeffrey regains his consciousness, only to see Elizabeth is gone. Just then, he realizes that she might have gone back to the red light street, so he drives there quickly. Elizabeth tosses men who are not interested in her. Along the road, she meets a man named Mr. Baldy, who's eager to take her to release his bald hormones. They go to the same hotel where Jeffrey meets the hookers. Afterward, Mr. Baldy excitedly lies down on the bed and undresses quickly. As they get intimate, Mr. Baldy suddenly blows up from electric shock, ending his bald life. So Elizabeth takes the money from Mr. Baldy's wallet, but leaves his bald hormones behind. Then she encounters another man. He immediately flirts with her but explodes soon after. Meanwhile, Jeffrey arrives at the red light district and asks the hookers who approached him. After he mentions the Z mark on Elizabeth's arm, the hookers get upset since they know Zaro's girls are all gone. As the hookers walk away, Jeffrey shouts that the hookers will return. Suddenly, a man approaches him, asking about the incident, so he runs off. Elizabeth walks down the street looking for clients and goes to the bar where Zaro mourns for her girls. He vents out to his friend, who does not seem to believe him. Upon entering the bar, Elizabeth immediately gets attracted to the pretzels on the counter and devours them in whole. The bartender tries to stop her, so she snarls at her and ignores Zaro's friend flirting with her. Zaro's friend takes the pretzels away, so Elizabeth starts to utter Honey's lines and mentions Zaro and Jeffrey's names, which gets Zaro's attention. While Zaro's friend brings her to the sofa, Zaro secretly follows and sneaks at them, observing how Elizabeth responds oddly, using Hooker's daily hormone vocabulary and phrases. Zaro watches as his friend goes down on Elizabeth and suddenly explodes with electricity, causing people in the bar to freak out. Meanwhile, Jeffrey approaches the old preacher on the street, who tells him that Elizabeth is in the bar. Zaro discovers that Elizabeth's body is composed of different parts, as he notices that the arm is marked as one of his hookers. So he furiously confronts Elizabeth, but she forcefully pushes him away. In return, Zaro punches her straight in the face, which causes her neck to split wide open, then the electricity overflows. Just then, Jeffrey arrives while everyone is frighteningly leaving the bar. Jeffrey immediately comes to Elizabeth and holds her head in its proper place as they go home. Unknowingly, Zaro follows them to find out what Jeffrey has done to his hookers, as he is also suspicious of Elizabeth. 
Moments later, Jeffrey successfully stitched and screwed Elizabeth's neck. Then he resuscitates Elizabeth again by electrifying her, and hopes her transformation to turn out correctly. Successfully, Elizabeth wakes up and responds to Jeffrey. However, she only remembers the lawnmower incident, and gets confused about what happened afterward. So Jeffrey explains that she has died, but he revived her. Elizabeth feels delighted, and exclaims how proud she is of what Jeffrey did. So she supportively encourages him to let the world know about his miraculous effort. Jeffrey explains that he can only do that through estrogen-based blood serum, which can only bring back women. But Elizabeth still expresses how proud she is. But not long after that, she notices that her body is not hers. She freaks out and tells him she can feel many different women inside her. So Jeffrey tries to calm her down, and explains that it is because he desperately loves her. Just then, Zaro comes from behind and swiftly decapitates him. Elizabeth screams in fright, but Zaro immediately declares that she is now his possession. After that, he calls the name of his hookers and states he will retake them. Subsequently, a hand slowly emerges from the cooler as Zaro raises his hand. Zaro notices the cooler shaking, then it falls. Shockingly, Zaro and Elizabeth get stunned to see the spare parts of the hookers, which have been reanimated as well by the lightning and transformed into several freakish Lynn Franken hookers. They then start to crawl out and attack Zaro. As he stumbles, one of the misshapen Frankenhookers smacks him on the lips. They immediately drag him into the cooler, where he would have his last breath. After that, Elizabeth picks up Jeffrey's head and decides to revive him too. Afterward, Jeffrey regains his consciousness and asks Elizabeth what happened. So Elizabeth explains that Zaro came and killed him. So through the help of Jeffrey's notes, she revived him using the same operation he did on her. Jeffrey freaks out as he realizes that Elizabeth used the hooker's remaining body parts. Elizabeth explains that it is because his serum only works on female body parts. She then lets him see his body through the mirror. In the final scene, while Jeffrey is frustrated about his body, Elizabeth seems to mock him continuously as she utters the same explanation Jeffrey sent to her, that it is because of her love. Elizabeth cheerily declares that they will be together again. However, Jeffrey freaks out at his body and he can only groan in horror. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.